All right, y'all asked for it. This is my real day in the life with the iPad Air 4. So let's get right into it. I usually wake up at 4.30, but I woke up at 5 just to shoot this B-roll. I mean, to be honest, who does use iPad for their alarm? I never seen someone use this iPad for their alarm. I do. For real? As soon as I wake up, I fold my futon because I do not have a bed. I have a futon and I need to fold up my futon because your boy is hella productive. Sort of. After I fold my futon, I usually make a quick coffee. It's not like cold brew or any type of fancy coffee. It's just an instant coffee because your boy is cheap AF. Every morning, I start off my day by making my whole plan for the day and making a to-do list. The planning app that I'm using is the Google Calendar. I try many planning slash calendar apps, but I always came back to Google Calendar because I got so used to it. I use to-do list for my to-do list app. And to be honest, the reason why I use to-do list is because, you know, I've been using it for a long time and it is totally free, so I can't complain it. After I finish making the plan of the day and to-do list of the day, I use the sidecar feature on the iPad for my MacBook so I can use my iPad Air 4 for the second display. This is one of my favorite features about the new iPads and the sidecar feature is so minimalistic, so simple to use, and it is so useful when you don't have a second display. I usually use the sidecar feature to edit photos on Lightroom, web surfing, and controlling my Spotify playlist. Today, I was adjusting the thumbnail on Lightroom for my video about the iPhone 12 mini. From 7.45 to 8.45, I use my favorite note-taking app, which is, you know, Notion to write up the script for my upcoming video on YouTube. All right, since I don't have any battery life in my wireless keyboard, I have to type it on my iPad and I've been using the scribble feature on my iPad Air. And the scribble is totally fine, it works, but when I'm like writing numbers to alphabet and stuff, it does get kind of confused sometimes on this iPad. So if you guys want to use a scribble feature, it's very useful, but if you keep switching between, you know, alphabets and numbers, it might get confused. So just notice that. After I script for an hour, I decided to go for a grocery shopping because your boy did not have any food in his fridge. At 9.45, I had to take my first online class via Zoom, which was English Literature and Conversation. It's probably worth to mention right now that my major is in International Studies in Japanese College. So you know, this English class is important for my credit and it is a requirement credit, so I have to take it anyways. All right, so that was not a success. So I guess on Zoom, when I do a split screen on my iPad, you cannot use the FaceTime feature. So I cannot turn on my front camera on my iPad. And my professor was like, Mr. Peace, where you at? Like you need to turn on your camera. So I couldn't use my Notion. And when I was trying to type on my Notion, my freaking Bluetooth keyboard was broken. My Logitech K300. I mean, it's like four years old now, so I can't complain it, but it was totally broken. I couldn't press the word E. So I guess I have to use it as my lecture note for now on. So I'm going to turn on the Zoom meeting and the lecture on my MacBook, and I'm going to take a note on my iPad. So, you know, I'm still using my iPad and we still can test the battery life. For my second and third lecture, I use GoodNotes for my note-taking app. I know there's like a battle between notability and GoodNotes, but I personally went for a GoodNotes because, you know, it's cheaper. And it's totally working fine and my main note-taking app is Notion anyway, so I'm happy with my purchase. So, notability fans, please don't tag me on the comment description. I usually use GoodNotes for my lecture that requires idea, rough drafts, and different type of languages. And Notion is my final summary for all the notes I took and good notes. Between my second class and third class, I had a chance to make some lunch. So ya boy made a quick oats with the protein in it because ya boy is on that bodybuilding grind. And when I was making this lunch, I had a time to kill some battery of this iPad. So I watch a YouTube video. Okay, I'm waiting my oatmeal to get colder in the refrigerator. One thing I noticed about this iPad Air 4 is that the screen brightness is pretty bright. I didn't even use the Mac 
max brightness yet, but the screen itself of this iPad is very bright and the LCD quality is very high on iPad, even the iPad Pro, even the iPad Air, or even the previous iPads. So, I mean, the screen is totally fine. Even this is 60 hertz, I have no complaints about it. To be honest, as like a video consumption device, this thing is pretty awesome. One of the best features about iPad OS for students is the, of course, split screen. I can split between my lectures, presentation, and my note in one screen, which is pretty game changing for me because it takes my productivity to the next level. After I'm done with my third lecture, I decide to go to the gym, which takes me about 35 to 40 minutes of walking. Yeah, that's pretty far. Anyway, as soon as I got back from the gym, I decided to make a quick dinner and watch some YouTube video while I was eating my dinner. Right now, I'm really into Max Tuning and Ali Abdul, so I will link their video down in the description below so you guys can check it out. They are such a great YouTubers. After dinner, I took my fourth lecture, which was on demand class, so it doesn't have to be at a certain time in my room, so that was pretty helpful. After I took my fourth lecture, I started to edit my photos for my friend's streetwear brand called Atone, which is this t-shirt that I'm wearing right now, link in the description. I use Affinity photos for the photo editing app and this app is very powerful. We recently did a pop-up store in Harajuku and I took the photos and video for them so I was editing the photos for their Instagram story and Affinity Photo is very useful and it's pretty easy to edit some photos. After I finished the editing I watched some Skillshare course about brand strategy from Mark Polo which is a brand strategist and took some couple notes on my iPad Air and that was end of my day. Alright guys it's about 8.56 in the evening so basically 9 o'clock and I wake up at 4 30 every single day almost every single day so you know nine o'clock is pretty late for me so i'm about to wind down in my futon so total screen on time i had on this ipad air 4 was eight hour and 50 minutes for today and i still have 34 percent of the battery life which is pretty crazy i mean yeah in the morning i was using the sidecar feature for my macbook on this ipad so it was basically charging but you know that was like maybe hour hour and 15 minutes so the whole total screen on time is about seven hours and like 45 minutes which is still pretty freaking good so i am not complaining anything about this ipad air force battery life anyway guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video i made a video about iphone 12 mini so if you guys are curious about iphone 12 mini and their battery life please click this video right here and if you guys want to know about pixel 5 my review about pixel 5 is right here anyway guys i'll see you guys next time my name is peace gates i'll see you guys in the next video peace out